What's going on guys? It's Cameron from Tinker's Musings here. Today we're going to talk about a very interesting subject in the JBOD space. You may have seen some chatter lately on the 60 bay JBODs. The one I'm actually covering is the Cisco UCS S3260 and these have 60 drives capable, 56 top loading 3.5 inch drives and then 4 two and a half inch drives on the back. You can also install some U.2 drives for some fast NVMe storage, PCI Express 3.0, and the CPU family is Intel Xeon V3, V4, 2600 series, and you can go up to 256 gigabytes per node on the RAM. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so once you log into your Cisco Integrated Management Controller, this is the summary page that will load up. We won't cover too much about this today because I want to jump into the networking and storage aspects. All right, so inventory will give us a listing of the nodes and their cores and memory and whether they're powered on or not. Power supplies, we can actually see how much power each of the power supplies is drawing currently. And seems to be around 120 watts. That's not bad. Over here on dynamic storage, you can actually set up zoning. And what zoning en enables us to do is split up the drives across each node. You cannot share drives with each node. You have to allocate a drive to a node but that gives us the flexibility of say splitting up the 56 drives across the two servers and it looks like it's already done that for us in some capacity so you might not even have to go and change much but that's really nice for an unraid sort of workload because Unraid has a 28 drive plus two parity drive limit. And when you split up 56 by two, that's 28 drives. So that fits within our Unraid limits. And now that's as of the making of this video, Unraid may change in the future. But I like the idea of having two nodes to handle such a large chassis of drives. There are other operating systems such as Proxmox and different hypervisors, but those are more compute related, less storage related. Okay, so networking is something we need to understand from a high level at least, so that you can access this machine from your network. The management interface is accessible over the one gigabit interface, but you cannot access the nodes over the one gigabit interface. That's why these are called external interfaces. You have to use the 40 gigabits in order to get on the network. Another thing to note is that these must be official Cisco cables. You cannot use third party cables. I've heard of just some compatibility issues even if you trick the device identification and you know somehow get it to link i've heard that it will drop a connection over time so yes cisco cables are more expensive but they'll give you a better journey in the long run for your money you, you won't have a bunch of cheap cables just sitting in a pile i actually did try a few of the off-brand cables to see if they would work Unfortunately, they weren't coded correctly, so they didn't even start up. One trick, though, at least that I saw on the Serve the Home forums, is that somebody put an official cable in and then swapped it out with one of these off-brand third-party cables. And it did work for some time, but your mileage may vary with the different cable qualities. So keep that in mind. Invest a little bit, get some of these Cisco cables. If you don't yet have 40 gigabits on your home network, the 4x10 gigabit breakout cables are also very nice. I got a pair of them for $30 each. They're not too bad in terms of price. You do need 8 of the 
open 10 gigabit ports on your switch but if you have that capability that's great if you're only running in a single node then you don't even need to worry about that secondary cable And then the VNIX, this is what actually gets presented to the operating system that you install. In my case, Unraid. Basically, what you can do here is configure the VLAN mode to access, and that presents the full 40 gigabit connection to the operating system. Trunk would give it more of a, you know, the capability of setting up VLANs and further breaking up your network if that's how you wanted to configure it. I don't mind having the full 40 gigabits here. That's gonna be quite nice for other systems that can communicate at 40 gigabits. Believe it or not, if you have this thing fully loaded up, you can saturate 40 gigabits with certain RAID configurations on spinning disks because 28 of those, even if you manage to get them all into one node, man, that's going to be blistering fast for a RAID 0 or RAID 10 configuration, for example. Um, you'll easily hit that 40 gigabits on spinning disks. That's something that would be fun to play with, uh, but I'm mostly interested in this for Chia currently. Okay, so this is the storage controller. It does say RAID. Don't be alarmed by that. It is a hardware RAID controller. It supports multiple different RAID types. And we'll get into that in just a moment. The important thing to note for the RAID controller is that you must set your state to JVOD. I believe you can use this interface to control JVON status, and this is where it's going to present the disk directly to the operating system, pass it straight through, not create some kind of virtual disk that is a RAID 0 single disk configuration like you might see on some of these other RAID hardware RAID solutions. So once you've get, gotten that configured, you're able to see each of these drives. You can even read the smart data as we'll see in a little bit from Unraid. Additionally, the two SSDs that are made available on the back, those get added to the JBOD section of the RAID controller. That wraps up the storage options from the web management interface for the Cisco integrated management controller. Let's go take a look at Unraid. So this is the Unraid interface and it's booted up on node one. I have a USB stick connected to the KVM breakout cable. I would like to figure out if I can use the onboard USB port, but that's something I haven't quite gotten down yet. And it's currently booted up in UEFI, UEFI mode. It can also boot as BIOS, but you have to decide when you're building your USB stick which method you're going to boot from. All right, and this is pretty much your standard Unraid installation, Unraid OS Pro. It's version 6.9.2. It picks up all of the, the information from the BIOS and the motherboard. You see your standard CPU usage. Um, I think newer versions of Unraid 6.10 and above are going to actually have graphs. That's something I'm looking forward to getting into soon. You can see your RAM utilization. The most awesome thing to see here is the 40 gigabits, 40,000 megabits technically is how it's being reported, but that is getting passed in directly from that virtual NIC that you defined in your network settings on your Cisco. So very cool. You have that full speed available. That means very, very fast plot copying, whatever you're going to do, 
Um, it, as long as you have fast storage on the other end, you should be able to handle and saturate that link. All right, like we talked about earlier, I'm going to look at one of the disks and we can look at it, the smart attributes. Here we see the full serial and model number being passed in, not some virtualized serial number that comes from a RAID 0 single disk. And then these are additional smart attributes. And then here we can see the full information about the hard drive itself, the manufacturer, rate, rotational speed, form factor, everything you want to know about it. So it is indeed a pass-through and not a virtualized RAID 0 disk. Good to see. And uh, yeah, today's video, I'm not going to be getting into like all the rest of Docker and virtual machine setup. That's something I can do later on. I will be setting up Machineris. I have a Machineris full node that could possibly migrate to this box. Uh, just thinking about best ways to distribute my home lab so I'm using less power. And because, goodness, 60 drives in one chassis, I may actually consolidate most of my excess hard drives into this chassis. But I have to plan that. I have some of them that are 2.5 inch and some are 3.5 inch. So some planning is required for that. However, I do think it would benefit the power usage in the long term. All right, well, that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And if you would, please like and subscribe. And remember to hit that bell icon so that you can be notified of the next video. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.